Hello and welcome. Today we're going to go over what is inarguably considered the worst class of Dungeons and Dragons. And I've heard a lot of bad things about what they did with the Ranger, which is tough to believe, all things considered. So let's just go ahead and jump on into it. Today we are talking about a very big topic. We're talking about the Ranger, and we effectively have a brand new class with this ranger. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, it is super exciting. The ranger, more than any other class in the new player's handbook, is a new class. People got to see the new evolution class. of the class through the Unearthed Arcana process, and now in the new player's handbook, you will get the brand new ranger. And every facet of this class has been revisited, fine-tuned, the class has always been widely played, but in our satisfaction surveys over the years, the class has also been one of our lowest rated classes. And so the ranger, along with the monk, uh, received major overhauls in the new player's handbook, with again the ranger receiving such a major overhaul that again, it's a brand new class. Yeah. Shall we dive in? Yes, please. Right away at first level, if you've played uh, a ranger over the past 10 years in 5th edition, you're going to see just how new it is because everything at first level is new. <laughs> so first off, you get your spell casting now right away at first level. This is something we did in the Paladin as well in the New Player's Handbook. Spell casting is a fundamental part of each of these classes' identities, and we no longer wanted these two classes. I've never once heard somebody go, you know, I want to cast spells. Let's play a ranger. Right. Rangers can cast spells. That's cool. But they've got such a, a small and, I mean, let's face it, mediocre spell list that it, it was never the main thing. Um, that's not to say that rangers were unplayable, but nobody ever, ever, ever played a ranger for their spell casting. That was that's not a thing. Uh it's not a major focus of their class. It never has been. Maybe it will be now. It never has been. I don't I sometimes I feel like he's never played some of these classes from from 5e. Um because this isn't the first time where he said something that was like so out of pocket that I had to pause the video a minute and 31 seconds in and be like where is he getting his information from? Like, have, has he never played a ranger before? Like, I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. I, mm, oh, oh, bad. Um, but like, nobody, at least I've never met anyone that's been like, I'm gonna play a ranger to cast spells. Mm. That's not, that's not a thing. This is to wait, uh, to get such a vital resource. Partly because we also want people who are new to playing these classes to immediately get fun. accustomed to integrating in <laughs> the spell use that is a part of the hybrid nature of the Ranger and the Paladin. Right. These are the quintessential oh, hybrid boy. characters in D&D going all the way back to first edition mm -hmm. that fuse weapon use with magic use. So f spell casting... It's at first level now hearing for the same shit that I'm hearing? Piggybacking on that, we oh. also now have a brand new version of the favored enemy feature. Okay, and here we go. this feature now gives you the Hunter's Mark spell prepared all the time okay. and also gives you free castings of it a certain number of times per okay. day. This is great okay. because it means those castings will no longer compete with your spell casting as a ranger if you want to do other things with your spells. Hunter's Mark is the way that you mark an enemy as your favorite foe. It's going to make it so that you deal more damage to them. And if you're in a pursuit situation in your adventure, it means you're going to have an easier time of tracking them. Now we'll come back to... Okay, so that, that is where he should have started, in my opinion. That is the main thing, the main focal point of being a ranger is favorite enemy and hunter's mark. That's it. So I love the fact that they changed that. It's 
they you have free casts of it now it's always prepared so it doesn't it doesn't take a, a spot on your prepared spell list because it's already automatically prepared like that's fantastic that is fantastic to this spell as we journey upward through the levels in this class because we're going to see that the new ranger then has that spell improved at later levels good but good. we're going to stay here at first level for now okay because also at first level rangers get weapon mastery yeah having spell casting with sort of favored enemy as the everyone gets weapon mastery. I feel like we don't have to casting. bring that up anymore. That's the magic side of the ranger. So far, every well, class has had some form of weapon mastery. Weapon mastery, and but whatever this means that with rangers, it. like all of our classes that uh -huh. are getting weapon mastery, will get oh, so I think to the wizard enjoy didn't get it. the brand new tactical options that I the think. weapon mastery system provides, and because rangers have a very broad weapon selection, that means. I think we're going to see many different flavored rangers just in terms of their weapon use. At level two, rangers get fighting style, yeah. uh, which was a feature that the 2014 ranger had, and then also a new feature called Deft Explorer. And there was a version of Deft Explorer as an option in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. The version that's now here in the new player's handbook gives you expertise, in a skill of your choice that you have proficiency in and also lets you pick two more languages that you know. This feature is all about the skillfulness that rangers traditionally have, particularly because of how much they roam. Uh, I mean, it's in the name. Uh, it's often e yeah. easy to forget that what ranger is referring to is it is a person who ranges far and wide. And so seeing the world, particularly the natural world, but also the people who live in that world is a really fundamental part of the ranger's identity. The other feature I mentioned at this level, fighting style, has been upgraded since its 2014 version because rangers are no longer limited to a sort of subsection of the fighting style options in the game. They, like Paladins and fighters can choose from the whole list of fighting style options that are now in the feat chapter of this book. And the number of options there is greater yeah. than the number of options in the 2014 player's handbook. Now, we also provide yet an additional choice in this fighting style feature. If you as a ranger player would rather your ranger lean more on the magic side of your class identity, you have the option of foregoing one of the fighting style feats, instead taking this option called Druidic Warrior, which is then going to give you some Druid cantrips uh, to add to your kit. And we wanted to make it easier. Why? Is this just gonna be another one of those choices like with the Paladin where, um... Oh, we're giving you a choice, but in six levels, that choice is going to be made irrelevant. Because <laughs> you can still get the best of both worlds. Like, I'm fine with them making a choice. The problem is, they keep giving you a choice of character creation, and then several levels down the road, making that choice irrelevant. Like, if you're going to give us a choice, that's fine. That's fine. But the choice has to mean something. It's... You're, you're starting a path. There's no turns or forks in this path. Your fork is the beginning of your goddamn path. You pick magic or you pick physical. That's it. If you're going to make us choose, make us choose. I don't... I don't. For Ranger players, as we've done in several of the other classes in the New Player's Handbook, to nudge the class in the direction nudge they the want to go in with it when it comes to, Liar. especially in hybrid classes, how much do I want to lean uh, in the weapon side of my identity and how but much do I want to don't worry, we're going to make it so you can still stay side. dead center on the level, spectrum. Like all the other classes, you get your subclass. 
We'll come back to those after yeah. we've we've traveled sure. through the whole class. The ranger still has extra attack. Cool. At level six, the ranger gets a feature now called roving mm -hmm. because again they 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 travel okay. far and wide. What's it do though? And because of this feature, rangers will now have a boost to their speed. Uh, a 10 foot boost to be precise while they aren't wearing heavy armor. And on top of that, all Rangers now at this level also gain a climb speed and a swim speed. Okay. Uh, because okay. Rangers yeah. no, that's uh, are cool. meant to be the people who are yeah. best equipped. The, the 10 to foot movement, fuck that. Pretty with much the climb and the swim speed. Yeah. And we support that fantasy both with the class features that are present, but also through the spells. There'll be many familiar spells from the 2014 spell list, but people will also see there are some uh, additions to that list, so it's a bit more robust. And now, whenever a ranger finishes a long rest, they can change one of the spells that they have prepared. This is a big change for rangers, because it used to be that they had their, their list of spells and they... <laughs> It is a list of like 20 total spells and only five of them are usable. <laughs> they can change their prepared spells. <laughs> oh god, I hope they massively buff up their spell list because in 5e, the 2014 player's handbook there, their spell list was ridiculously small and only an even smaller handful of those spells were actually useful. So there's no, never any need to change your prepared spells. They could only change one of them whenever they would level up. But now it's every day when they finish a long rest. Right. They can change one. Mm. So that's back at first level in the oh. spellcasting feature. But I bring it oh, up now yeah. talking about just the Rangers cool. exploration. That was a good uh, one. This is the first video to make me laugh that goddamn hard. We made art. this change in spellcasting to better support the utility side of the Ranger spell use. Because the Ranger spell list has more utility than it does have outright damage. And so because of that utility focus, Maybe it does we wanted rangers to be able to at least, you know, change one spell a day, depending on the situation that's ahead of them, at least that they're guessing is ahead of them yeah. in the coming adventuring day. As before, the subclass, subclass features keep coming, ability score improvement keeps coming. Up at 19th level, like all the classes in the new player's handbook, there's Epic Boon. But they also now get two more expertise options. So the ranger is going to be even more skilled, yeah. even more of an expert than uh, they were in 2014. And at 10th level, they get a feature called tireless. And with this feature, the ranger, a certain number of times per day, can give themselves temporary hit points representing a resilience that they are drawing into themselves from nature itself. And they also have an always-on ability that whenever they finish a short rest, if they have any exhaustion levels, the number of exhaustion levels they have reduces by one. Most people have to take a long rest to have their exhaustion go down by one, but rangers, who again, are meant to be the ones who are best equipped to roam across vast distances, their exhaustion okay. goes away faster. Yeah, no, I can get behind that. Characters. That makes sense from a standpoint. At level 13, here's where their Hunter's Mark spell uh, starts to improve. So they Ooh. already always have that spell prepared. Bet. And they get a number of free castings of it per day. Sure. Starting at level 13, damage can no longer break their concentration on the spell. Okay. They still have to concentrate on it. Uh, this is important so that the spell that's fine because can't most ranger stack spells aren't concentration, with other so that's that good. also require yeah. concentration. Like yeah. Then at okay. level fourteen, okay. you get nature's veil, where as a bonus action, you can again drawing on the primal magic that you draw on as a ranger, just poof become invisible. Oh, uh, it's sort of a, cool. a a supernatural like a death camouflage. Thing. Yeah, the no, no, that's 2014 cool. ranger had the ability at higher level to easily camouflage themselves, mm -hmm. but it required them to loop through hiding, through specifically sure. the hide action. Now, it's far more supernatural where just 
they're gone. Yeah, yeah no, that's and, cool. And they are invisible. That's so cool. it's going to be easier to use and be more effective as the ranger creeps around, perhaps stalking one of their foes. Like a death stalker. We also have at level 17 another upgrade to Hunter's Mark, where now the ranger always has advantage on attack rolls against whoever is currently marked by their Hunter's Mark. Oh, good, good, good. Level That's 18, cool. yeah. they get blind sight out to 30 feet uh, as they become almost like a creature of the wild, no. yeah. being able to, uh, you know, even, even if they're blinded, no. see or effectively see uh, around them. And then at 20th level, the damage of their hunter's mark increases. So no, it, it is now a D10 rather than a D6. All of this together. Cool. So blindsight doesn't make any sense for, for just because you're a ranger, you have blindsight. That doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, I, I, with that one, I feel like they're just trying to like, make people want to play the rangers say hey hey if you can make it up to level 18 you get blind sight hmm. one it's that's too far out for anybody to be enticed to play ranger for that um two it just it doesn't make sense um they're good hunters that's all rangers are they're good hunters and they're good explorers. That doesn't give them the ability to see when they've been blinded. Like, whatever. I can I can push past that uh, little feature that makes zero sense for them to have just as a class feature. Um, <laughs> let's <laughs> let's circle back on that that twentieth level feat though. Um, you want just so I'm getting this straight here. They want us to play. What is still turning out to be a pretty boring class by the sounds of it. A pretty uninspired, uninteresting class. That, you know, just by the sounds of the base class, we haven't gotten to the subclass yet, so maybe that's where the the spicy meatball is, right? Um, they want us to play this, this uninspired hack of a class all the way up to level 20, so that when we attack something that's marked with our hunter's mark, we can roll a d10 instead of a d6. Look. Look. I've said this in every video at this point. Uh, the, the, the 20th level thing is pointless for them to be doing anything with. Because nobody plays a class singularly to level 20. Okay? Nobody does. Unless they're forced to. And I got news for you. While I've seen a lot of DMs, more DMs than ever should exist, telling their players that they're not allowed to multi-class, uh, in those instances, I haven't seen a single Ranger player. You can't play a Ranger for 20 levels. It's just not doable. So they want us to slog through this for... A slightly bigger die, but only on what we have marked. Okay. Okay. That 20th level feat is, is as uninspired as this entire class is. When you combine the new features, the enhanced spell list, the ability to use more of your spells as a ranger means you will be the paramount <sighs> explorer and sort of survivalist in the wilds, uh, no. supporting uh, your party with your various abilities, but also being a badass on your own. No. Perfect. No, That's you're amazing. Not. Those are huge changes. Again, it, it's a new class. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it no, is it's not. top to bottom. Uh, you can't. It's not a new class. It's the same old boring class it's been for the last decade. It's the same class. They've just added a couple things and gave you your spell list one level earlier. Your spell list of 20 spells 15 useless ones, 5 useful ones. It's. The coolest thing is the changes they've made to Hunter's Mark. It's still the same old class. It's. 
It's Drek, is what it is. It rebuilt, and so much of that done in conversation with the community mm -hmm. through Unearthed Arcana. And, and heavily focus on that fantasy that you have. As if you are wanting to play a ranger, this is, you're dealing that damage, you're wandering, you are the best at so many things that you should be the best at, and you also ha can have expertise in the things that you should. And many of these benefits also are very concrete. One of our misses uh, in the 2014 Ranger is we had some really nice flavorful abilities having to do with different environments or different types of creatures that didn't really deliver a reliable concrete game experience. And everything that we've done here has been... Yeah, see, that, that's another thing that I'm concerned about. They haven't mentioned what is probably one of the best things about the 2014 Ranger, in my opinion, and that's favored terrain. Um, so it's my understanding that they got rid of favorite terrain since he said nothing about it here. Um, that gives, that gives you advantage whenever you're, you're traversing through a train, even if like, you know, there's, there's something that would cause you to roll a disadvantage for some, you know, form of movement. Uh, you, you would get advantage in most checks when you're within your favorite terrain. And yeah, sometimes that favorite terrain feature is kind of useless. Like if your favorite terrain's a snowy tundra and your your campaign takes place on on some Somerset Isles, um, but most of the time your DM tells you in session zero the rough area you're going to be. Okay, so you can pick your favorite terrain, so it will have an impact in the campaign. That was, in my opinion, the best thing about the 2014 Ranger. It was still an uninspired, boring class. But between Favorite Terrain and Favorite Enemy and Hunter's Mark, it had potential. And it looks like we got rid of that. Maybe it's just been moved into a subclass. Um, I don't know. And about delivering the fantasy of the Ranger and doing it in a very direct, fun way so that you can just you get your feature and you get to be Rangery. Yeah. Then we, we took that philosophy Rangery. and carried it into the subclasses. Uh, we have the Hunter and the Beastmaster both returning from the 2014 oh, Players so even Handbook, less changes. but okay. both of them redesigned. Oh, yeah. I And then they corrected. are joined by the Gloomstalker and the Fey Wanderer. Uh, how about we talk about uh, the Beastmaster first? Yeah, let, let's talk about the Beastmaster because not only has this class been rebuilt, this is effectively a new subclass as well. Yeah, so the, the Beastmaster <laughs> subclass, it shares the name with the 2014 version and the theme of the ranger who has this supernatural bond with a beast but otherwise, beyond the name and the theme, it's completely new. It's a, it is a brand new subclass. And people got to see an earlier version of this new subclass in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, specifically in the new creature options. Because in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, we, we introduced this idea of these sort of primal beasts that the ranger can bond with, the beast of the land, the beast of the sky, and the beast of the sea. But now you get to see that piece that originally appeared in Tasha's now integrated in with the whole subclass and the whole sub subclass redone around that. And so now you have a subclass where you and your primal beast are this united unit yeah you, you have this mystical connection with each other you're now as a ranger going to be able to command your beasts as a bonus action instead of an action which means that you will feel much more than you did in the 2014 version like you and your beast companion are working in tandem with each other uh, we've made it so that also this beast that you choose because Rather than it being a stat block, you go fish out of the monster manual. Yeah. Is one of these three stat blocks specifically designed for this subclass? We could make each of these stat blocks sort of level up with you, and each one have its own shtick, whether it's again land related, sky related, or sea related. 
And as you said, these level up, they gain power over time. Yes, because they are a fundamental part of your power as a Beastmaster Ranger. And so we wanted to ensure from the inside by designing these creatures specifically for this subclass, ensure that they are delivering the effectiveness they need to be delivering for you over the course of your career as a Beastmaster. All of it together, uh, means I think this is going to be a thrilling subclass, not only for people who have already played a Beastmaster, but also people who have not yet tried it out yeah. and had the fun of almost having two characters. Because yeah. the, the Beastmaster is one of the few subclasses in the game where it's really about not only playing your ranger, it's also about playing your ranger's beast friend. And that friend can, can almost take on a role of being like a member of the party. The Beast Companion uh, just keeps getting better with you. Uh, what you can do with it in terms of your commands improves, and it culminates with you even being able to share spells with your companion. Mm -hmm. So that when you like cast a spell targeting yourself, you can also have your Beast Companion benefit as well. And all, all of the improvements inside the subclass mean that you just, over time, become more and more of this amazing sort of two beings in, in total sync with each other, working as an exploration and fighting unit. Oh, that's fascinating. So if I cast a healing spell, that spell may also affect my beast. Yes, as long at as... At the same time. As long as it's within 30 feet of you, yeah, you could cast Cure Wounds on yourself, and your beast 30 feet away could is then also healed. Oh, that's amazing. And also, that's just again, driving right home how you are this unified unit, you also get to the point where your hunter's mark starts benefiting your beast. Oh, that's strong. Yes. <laughs> when, the, when the beast is enjoying hunter. Look, if you don't have anything to say, you don't have anything to add, you don't have to say nothing. Uh, what does it say? His name's Todd, Ted, Todd, I think Todd. Uh, oh, that's fascinating. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's strong. Uh, just, just let him cook. Like he's cooking poorly. Uh, without, without fire, he's, he's cooking on the sidewalk in the middle of summer. Like <laughs> you don't need to try and make it better than save this. <laughs> this guy. Just, um, overall, so far, it's the same class it's always been. They've revamped it a little bit, but. They need to, somebody needs to get these guys a dictionary that's 300 pages of just the word rebuilt and its definition. Because I think that's the only way they're going to understand what the word rebuilt means. Because they didn't rebuild the Ranger class, it's the same class. They didn't rebuild the Beastmaster subclass by the looks of it. It's the same class, but we're also not all the way through. Through it, I don't think. Through Mark, that, uh -huh. that becomes dangerous. So this brings us... Okay, so that was the end of it. All right, so I was fine with, with what I was saying. I think it's cool that they revamped it in such a way that your your familiar pet, your, you know, the, the beast that you formed a bond with levels up with you. That's great. That was the only real thing holding back the Beastmaster class, in my opinion. Um, because... You start off with a beast, that's cool, but after four levels, your beast is kind of useless. Um, the fact that you can now command it as a bonus action, uh, I was already doing that as a DM, letting my, on the off chance I had a ranger, let my ranger who played Beastmaster, you know, command their beast with, with the bonus action, you know. Um, I let people do that, like, if, if they wanted to... to get a pet of some sort any any class with a pet you can tell it to do something as a bonus action like it you could can you control it as your bonus action i've always kind of done that it just makes sense so the fact that they're making the fact that it took them 10 years to make it an official rule is, blows my mind um but it's cool it's cool now it's in a core rule book nobody can give me give me it's like none of the the rules lawyers can go, um, actually, that's not how that works. Shut up. My table. It works how I say it works. Um, but yeah, no, the Beastmaster class is the same as it was in the 2014 Player's Handbook with a couple of 
of revamp things. And I mean, don't get me wrong, those revamps are cool. Um, but they didn't rebuild the class. It's the same goddamn class it's, it's been for a decade. But this is a new class, the Fey Wanderer. Fey Wanderer Ranger. New to this me. came out of Tasha's. And this was a really, really super fun one because eventually in your roaming, you might have gotten some back background radiation from the Fey Wild or you know been under its influence, or maybe that's where you, in fact, come from. Yeah, the Fey Wanderer is, along with the Gloom Stalker, these two have wandered into the player's handbook to bring the sort of mirror world feeling yeah. of the Shadowfell and the Feywild, uh, because those are the planes of existence that we've associated these two subclasses with. And so if you think of the Beast Master and the Hunter being associated with the material plane, the Fey Wanderer is associated with the Feywild and the Gloom Stalker with the Shadowfell. And so those two subclasses, the Fey Ranger and the Shadowy One, they are the, in many ways the, the more shadowy one. rangers. Can't even remember the, the name of his own subclasses. That's how then boring the this Hunter class is. Being the least magical of the four. Now, the Fey Wanderer, it's going to be a fun friend to revisit for anyone who played the Fey Wanderer from Tasha's Cauldron. Nobody. And what you're going to see here is the the features that you loved in the class, but now integrated into the new ranger, benefiting from uh, the new spells that are here. Uh, and uh, in a way, the Fey Wanderer wandered into this book along with some of the spells in Tasha's Cauldron, including Summon Fey, yeah. which was something it had in Tasha's Cauldron. And thankfully, because Summon Fey is now in the player's handbook, the Fey Wanderer in the player's handbook can continue to enjoy the ability at higher level of summoning uh, a fey creature to fight beside the fey wanderer. Before you get there, uh, you not only have extra spells that you have always prepared, you can also uh, deal extra psychic damage with some of your strikes as you channel the magic of the fey wild. Uh, you also can beguile people with your other worldly glamour and ultimately because we can never resist when it's a fey themed uh subclass uh we end up giving you misty steps so that you yeah. can teleport <laughs> uh and we also along the way we we help guard your mind against being charmed or frightened uh so the whole package means you if you choose this subclass will be drenched through and through with fey magic and be a wonderful companion to, and here I'll do it, I'll refer to the warlock, <laughs> a, wonder, a wonderful companion to a warlock who has the archfey patron. Yeah. And the two of you can teleport around to your heart's content. Per perfection. Uh, yes. Yeah, it'll be fey chef's kiss. Yeah. The sparkly trickster feeling of the fey wanderer is in stark contrast to the Gloom Stalker, who instead is not only channeling. Yeah, here's the thing. I don't have a problem with anything that he said about about the uh, the Fey Wanderer. It seems, I mean, it seems just as boring as as Beastmaster's Ranger in general. Um, I do, however, have a problem with um, they got. They gave one subclass Missy Step because it's a it's Fey thing, uh, it's connection to the Fey, and it's like, oh, now everything that has a connection to the Fey has to have Misty Step. <laughs> Isn't that a fun joke we put in? <laughs> Let's turn this thing into a gimmick. <laughs> the Fey Wild's cool. It's cool on its own. It doesn't need some cheap gimmick like Misty Step to make it cool. All right, I. You want to give the Fey Wanderer Misty Step? I'm fine with that. Yeah. You want to give the the Fey Warlock Misty Step? Fine. Whatever. I think it's dumb that you're reducing something as cool as the Fey Wild to a gimmick. But 
if you're going to do that, at least don't treat your your player base like we're a bunch of idiots that couldn't have made that connection ourselves. you know? It's, it's a dumb connection to be made, but I guarantee you we're all smart enough to have made it. And it's not funny. It's stupid, and I hate it. Shadowfell time. Uh, the magic of the Shadowfell, but also just the shadows of the deep places of the earth, because you can also think of this being a ranger associated with the Underdark. And this subclass originally appeared in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Yeah, and I've always loved this. The, no, just the core concept of if you rely on your dark vision, you're invisible to them. Yes. Terrifying. You're the thing that the knight is afraid of. It's su such a wonderful new, uh, theme for, for a subclass. It's just chilling. Well, and we've made it so that as you are hunting those creatures of the darkness, uh, you're going to be even better at it. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we did right away in the subclass in your level three dread ambusher feature is we made it so that your extra damage is no longer locked to the first round of combat. Yeah. We wanted you to be able to enjoy being a gloom stalker throughout a battle, if you so choose, and yeah. not essentially, well, I was a gloom stalker on round one, and then yeah. for the rest of the time, I was a generic ranger. Um, but now we've generic, made it so that you too. will be able to use your dreadful strike also psychic damage because I you know I, I I introduced the the gloom stalker as in a way the foil to the Fey Wanderer. Yeah. And just as the Fey Wild and the Shadowfell are almost sort of opposites of each other, but they often both have to do with the mind and the emotions. Yeah. It's interesting that both of these subclasses, their extra damage is psychic damage. And the Gloom Stalker does a significant amount of psychic damage every yes. turn. Um, well, uh, but a limited number of times per day. Yes, it's, it's not endless. <laughs> but it's but, but it's 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 bursty. It's it's a good amount of damage. It's it's healthy. They they like their their face sibling. Uh, also have a list of spells that they always have prepared. Uh, they have their their umbral sight, which gives them dark vision or improves their dark vision if they already have it. As you mentioned, uh, creatures, other creatures that rely on dark vision to see in the dark can't see yeah. <laughs> the gloom stalker in the dark. Yeah. Uh, again, terrifying. They're great at initiative. Yes, they are. They are like their friends, the uh, assassin and the barbarian are going to be uh, more likely to go earlier in the battle than others. The whole concept of this is the ambusher, this is the hunter in the night, this is in the spell list reflects all that as well. I mean, it's, it's unusual to see like the ranger with disguise self, for example. This is, you are very much one with the shadows and illusion. They also, like their sibling, the Fey Wanderer, they, they end up having various mental defenses uh, and then also they're going to start being even more terrifying at level 11 with their stalker's flurry uh, because their their psychic damage goes up. Uh, <laughs> and so that, even more. Yeah, so yeah. that bursty damage uh, bursts even more. Uh, and also they can start um, exuding mass fear. <laughs> to, all around them. <laughs> all around them. Um, and they also can teleport once you get up up to level 15 teleport out of harm's way uh, when they are attacked so all of this combined means they are really terrifying resilient hunters uh, in the night and there's so many different ways to flavor this one in particular too because th this could be the fan helsing who is hu hunting mm -hmm. vampires or this can be a ranger who solely lives in cities or in the underdark. There's just so many ways to theme it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love this ranger. It is, it in many ways, is the gloom stalker is the sort of gothic ranger. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I like gothy things. You. <clears throat> so the first half of this subclass, we finally understand why the assassin rogue got shit housed so hard. 
because they took all the assassin stuff that should have been assassin stuff and gave it to the gloomstalker um don't get me wrong i'm i'm fine with the gloomstalker having them also um especially since the gloomstalker has other stuff like uh the, what was i this guy's so boring the the attack that they have that that does the psychic damage that's cool that they can keep that but everything else all the the the, the sneaky assassination stuff the fact that they could do it multiple times that's that's stuff that the assassin rogue should have gotten but they didn't because we don't want anything to be like our new rogue our new rebuilt ranger class that's not rebuilt at all like the Gloomstalker sounds fun. I don't want to hate on it the, as much as I do. But let's be real. The first half of the subclass is just what the Assassin Rogue subclass should have been. I don't know. No. <laughs> okay, now that brings us to the Hunter Ranger. This is the... Low magic ranger. <laughs> this this is in many ways sort of the subclass that is the baseline. Yeah. And what we've done is we took the version of the hunter that was in 2014, took and, the best elements of it and kept it and the sort same. Of remixed yeah. the whole subclass. So it too, like the Beastmaster, is really close to just being a brand new subclass. Oh wow. The Beastmaster okay. was close to being a new subclass. Is, you get a brand new feature uh, at level three called Hunter's Lore. Cool. And this allows you that while a creature is marked by your Hunter's Mark, to know whether that creature has any immunities, resistances, or vulnerabilities. Okay. And if that creature does, you know what they are. Oh, perfect. So you, you now uh, are really good at hunting because you know, ah, uh, we shouldn't use fire on this particular yeah. creature. Or we should use radiance on this creature so this right away was a fun feature for us to create to help the hunter just be a better hunter uh, then you get to the hunter's prey feature and here you have a choice just as the hunter choice. used to have a choice in in this feature uh, but the choice is we basically whittled in each of the choice points in the subclass we whittled the choices down to the best ones in the 2014 version, at each of the choice points, there was always basically a, a suboptimal choice. And so what we've done is we've narrowed it to the best choices so that whatever you choose, it's a solid choice. And then we went one step beyond that. We've now made it so that you can change your choice whenever you finish a short or long rest. The this choice. makes these features doesn't know what a choice far more is. tactically useful because then you can sort of steer your effectiveness toward what you think you face in the day or the hours ahead. We do this shtick again at level seven in defensive tactics. You have a choice, and then you can revisit your choice whenever you finish a short or long rest. And you'll see uh, familiar friends here in the features and escape the horde and multi-attack defense. At level 11, the hunter now also lets you, when you have Hunter's Mark on a creature yeah, and you deal damage to them, you can also deal that spell's extra damage to a different creature within 30 feet of the first creature. Yeah, that's amazing. It's essentially your Hunter's Mark starts splashing damage yeah. on, on other people. We did this because the Hunter has always had this when you looked at the choices that the subclass offered, it has always had this element of, I'm gonna deal more damage to this single target, or I'm going to be really effective at fighting an entire group. Yeah. We, we continue to have those themes inside the subclass. Yeah, Hordebreaker is fantastic. I just love that. But now with Superior Hunter's Prey, this new feature speaks to both themes because you yeah. can now deal a lot of damage to one target and throw some damage on somebody else. Perfect. And then at level 15, uh, you can take a reaction to give yourself resistance to damage when you take damage. Uh, and then that resistance lasts until the end of your current turn. 
Uh, so this is just a, a chance for you to uh, sort of grit your teeth through the damage that you're taking to enhance your survivability. Yeah. Because we want the hunter uh, to, whether the hunter is leaning more in a ranged attack direction or in a melee direction, uh, to have really high resilience as they embark on their hunts. This is a good ranger for the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, just, nice, you're just just mowing through hordes. <laughs> the, the, the nice thing about the hunter ranger, especially in the new player's handbook, is nothing. Is it's the ranger that's who's good fair. in that's any fair. situation, yeah. precisely because you can change your kit. Yeah. And so this this is the to use an old TV reference. This is sort of the MacGyver uh, no, ranger. No, it's not. Who you know, it's like. They've got the tool for the job. Just give them a minute uh, or an hour <laughs> in the case of the short rest. Thank you for these massive changes to the ranger. Uh... Massive changes to the ranger. There's no massive changes. Be real. There were a couple really cool alterations, a couple really cool new things. It's the same class. Do I see it getting more play with this new handbook? Yes. Do I see it? going up in its satisfaction scores sure but it can't go down any lower than what it's already at i mean it's already bottom of the friggin barrel uh, look the hunter subclass is cool um it's still the most uninspired boring one out of the the four but what the changes they made for the to the hunter's mark for the hunter's class like hunter's lore is cool i love it um I still don't see Hunter, the Hunter subclass, seeing a whole lot of play over Dooms or Gloomstalker and uh, the Fey Wanderer, uh, and, and hell, even the Beastmaster with with the Beast now leveling up with you is going to see some play. It's going to see some play. The Ranger is going to see more play than it got from its 2014 counterpart. Um, for better or for worse, it's going to. We can hate on this class all we want like, because it's easy. It's an easy target. It's just like. It's like the um, the Nickelback of Dungeons and Dragons. Super easy to hate on, but so many people love it, right? Um, and it, it's going to be like that. It's going to see more pay, play. People are going to love the changes, and that's fantastic. Um, I love a lot of the changes that they made. Some of them are stupid, but that's also me just having a weird bone to pick with this, with all the gimmicks they're throwing in. Um, whatever. It will see more play. Don't get me wrong. It's still bad. The class is... I like to say that there's no bad class in Dungeons & Dragons. The rogue is a bad class. The monk is kind of a bad class. But the rogue is a bad class. Um, it, it's not useless. By no means has it ever been useless. And it's it's not going to be useless now. With the changes they've made, it'll be useful. Um... But the ranger will never be the most popular class in Dungeons and Dragons. It's just not going to happen. It's not. Um, but for them to say that it's going to feel like a brand new class, it feels still feels like the same old, you know, boring class as it was in 2014. They didn't make enough changes to be able to back up their claim of it being a new class. Uh, none of the subclasses are new from their counterparts. The Beastmaster subclass is the exact same it was from the 2014 Player's Handbook, with the exception of the Beast levels up with you. Um, the only change they made to the Hunter subclass is the changes they made to Hunter's Mark. They're going to sit there and be like, oh, the, the Hunter subclass isn't going to use magic, and it, it focuses on the magic of Hunter's Mark. It's just as magical as the other three. It, it is what it is. I do like the the fact that there's you know slash damage with Hunter's Mark now, but I I still don't see the Hunter class seeing as much play as as I see the Gloomstalker seeing the most play out of any of of the subclasses if people play Ranger, um. But it's cool, it's cool, um, it's cooler than the 2014 iteration. I'd be hard pressed to call it cool, or inspired, or fun, um. Or anything other than boring. But hey, that's my opinion. 
we are going to have differing opinions. And please feel free to give me your opinion in the comments below. I will gladly have a conversation with you on this. Um, all that's left now is the Barbarian class. Uh, and I, I'm going to be on vacation next week, but I'm going to make sure that I record it and schedule it to post while I'm on vacation. So you will get that next week, I promise. It's coming. Um, I just... I didn't want the Ranger to be the last one I did because I didn't want to end this this playlist on a uh, on an uninspired, boring class like the Ranger. I I wanted to do the Ranger in the middle of the playlist, and I just I I, I just kept getting distracted by other better classes like the Cleric and the Wizard. Um, you know things with that are actually interesting and get played. Uh, so we're gonna finish this this whole thing up with with the barbarian class that'll come out next week um I, i'm shooting for i'm shooting for wednesday um coincidentally that's also the day i leave for my vacation where i'm going halfway across the country um but that's what i'm shooting for we'll see what happens i i plan on scheduling at least two videos to come out while i'm gone and one of them is going to be the barbarian video so so if you're interested in seeing the the changes to the barbarian class before september uh go ahead and, and hit the subscribe button so that you'll be notified when that comes out hopefully i know youtube's been having issues with its notification system um but yeah that's coming i promise and uh thanks for watching